Aloha, and welcome to this practice wad uh, using Twitter Bootstrap. And the idea here is we're going to create a revamped version of the Castle High School website. Um, so we go visit the site. Here's what it looks like. And, you know, it looks pretty old school. It doesn't look that bad, actually. But, you know, it's fairly old school. The particularly old school thing is this crazy marquee thing. Um, you know, that's like basically looks like the blink tag to modern web developers. So what we're going to do is um, just do a little makeover of this site. And the goal is to create something that looks more or less like this. Okay, we're going to use Twitter Bootstrap. We're going to retain that banner image and retain this middle image. But otherwise, it's going to have a more flat uh, kind of design, which is the more modern way um, uh, people are designing sites uh, now. And we're going to incorporate that red color, you know, which is their high school colors, a red and gray. We're going to build that into the site a little bit more prominently. Um, and then the cool thing that we're going to do is when the high school students are viewing the site on their mobile phone, we're going to hide that middle section with a photo because that doesn't really add much value, particularly when you're on, you know, it adds visual interest when you're on a laptop, when you're on a mobile phone, you really don't want that. And so um, we're just going to hide that. So that's pretty cool, nice little additional feature. Um, so that's the goal of this. And um, what I think I'll do is I'll open this link here. That's the picture. And in fact, I'll open up the Castle High School site in a new link as well. So we got both of those things hanging out as well as the assignment. Um, and we'll start doing it. So we got to start our timer. So we'll go here, say start. And then we'll kind of go through this thing. So we need to create a clips project called Responsive Castle High and use it to implement the Castle High School homepage. We're going to base our design on the thesis are us template. So that means we want to go here, we want to download the zip file, and um, once it's downloaded, we can go to the downloads directory, and we'll put it into, I guess, the desktop, and we'll double click to create it, and then we're going to call this Responsive Castle High. And then we'll import that into Eclipse by finding it on our desktop right here. And then we'll say Finish. And then the last thing we have to do is just rename the project Responsive. Castle. Uh, it's not the last thing we have to do. The next thing we have to do is do that. Having done that, we can now open it up um, and we can look at it in the browser. So we desktop, responsive castle high, index.html. There it is. And in order to make development at all fun, we need to add this folder to live reload and then enable live reloading of this particular browser window so that now I can do, for example, get rid of this welcome to Theses R Us, save it out, it goes away. Okay, so, um, so we're kind of ready to go here and let's go back to um, our thing. So we've based it on the Theses R template. It, it's gonna give us our three column layout stuff plus the Open Sans Google font being loaded. Actually, it turns out it does not do that. We're going to have to do that ourselves, which is a little irritating. But we're going to, let's follow the instructions, change the boot, actually, let's do this Open Sans Google font thing right now. And the way that I'm going to do that is go to my MISC, go to Getting Started Google Fonts, because that has an example of the code you want to do it because I don't like to type, I'd rather find it 
Um, so that that's how we're going to load our open sans into the um, into our site. So now that I fixed that, um, and we want to change the Bootswatch Simplex theme back to the default Bootstrap. So um, if you've been following along, all you you know that you can get there just by saying this, and that's going to change that. And then we go to here. And we see, yay, we're looking more like the, the regular one. So we got rid of the fonts and that kind of stuff. OK. Uh, we're going to use 710COC as the red color and 990 as the gray color. So I'm going to go here. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to deal with the body. But all this other stuff is from my old thing. So you know what I'm going to do is just get rid of it. OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically make myself a little uh, I'm going to make myself a little comment here, and I'm just going to copy this in right now. So it's in my style, and I can start using it. Okay. So anyway, remove the thesis R S C S styles. Did that. Put the castle high banner image at the top of the page. So I click on that, and I'm going to say save as. I'm in the right spot. Save header JPEG. Let's refresh. So there it is. So the way that I want to do that is by creating a um, some kind of CSS class that's going to say background image URL header.jpg and similarly to Kamanu um, we're going to use the cover it's going to be we're not going to do the Kamanu thing of centering it because in this case as we shorten it up we don't want the image to be centered we want to actually have this James B. Castle thing um, uh, available or within the screen at all times so we'll keep the background position to the default of left and then, um, what else? Uh, we need a size for it. Well, let's actually let's just let's um, let's now go to index, and we want this above the nav bar. So we're going to do like a div class equals whatever the heck it was. Let's, let's uh, do this now so we can see see things. Um, header image. Okay, so if we do that and we go look at us and we see nothing. And part of the reason is, is because we don't have any height for this. So let's make it, I don't know, 100 pixels or something. Okay, now it's appearing, but we notice that our, our nav bar is stuck to the top of the screen. And we also notice that we're, we have this thesis R us as the title, and that's not right. So we're going to say responsive castle high. Get rid of that. That's much better. And then for our nav bar, we can just get rid of this nav bar fixed top. Okay, and now that goes that stops sticking to the top, and now castle high school is at the top. That's what we want, but it's not quite enough height. Let's try 150. That's close, but still. No cigar. Because you can see the little shield thingy is still clipping. OK, that looks pretty good. There's a pixel at the corner there, but we're not going to worry about it. All right. Um, so if I look at my thing here, I can see I got this. The next thing, I believe, put the, we put it at the top of the page. Below the banner, you put the nav bar. Make the nav bar background red and the text gray. OK, so that's what they want. This is what we have. We've got to get rid of that theses are us uh, stuff. And we'll do that just by getting rid of the nav bar brand entirely. And then we want, OK, so now we want, let's do a little inspection here, because we want this guy to be gray. Let's start actually just by saying 
color pound 999. Okay. Um, and that'll be, you know, to make the, the, the color default to that. And we also want the, um, whatchamacallit, the font family to be open sans serif. Try that, put that in the body. And what you can see now is that our nav bar has um, got the right kind of font. So that's pretty good. Does it have the right kind of color? It does. See, it's 999. That's what we want is the color. Um, and if we look down, we can see the font failing is now open sans. So that's pretty awesome. Actually, it turns out that our color is being overridden from the body, but it's good because that happens to be the right color um, just from the Twitter bootstrap defaults. Okay, so let's see. Let's uh, get rid of this, go back to here. So put the navbar, make the navbar background red and the text gray. Okay, so right now let's inspect element. So the navbar, it looks like navbar inverse is setting the background, the background color and the border color. So let's let's make a dot navbar inverse. Um, Nav bar inverse. Okay, background color is supposed to be this red thing. Copy. And the, we save it out. Okay, that's good. And then the border color, we've got to make that this thing too. Okay, that's nicer. And then um, the highlighting, we're just gonna not worry about. We'll just get rid of this active. Okay, so that looks good. Um, and then, so that's looking pretty good. So now we want to set the navbar link name to those from the real site. So what is the real site? Here's the real site. Homepage, student, parents, faculty, staff, alumni, friends. So we're going to say homepage, faculty, staff, alumni, friends. And I don't like having links in there that are completely bogus. Alumni friends and contact us. Okay, so we go to us. Okay, that's looking better. Uh, make the navbar links in title 16 pixels. Okay, so we're going to say navbar links. Um, so let's see what these things are. So if we go there, let's just go uh, there, navbar. Okay, so these are getting their size. From the body. But we want them to be getting, so we want them to get their size from somewhere better. So navbar inverse is probably a place where we could do it. So font size, let's see, um, 16px. Okay, good. So now we've got our font size for this a little bigger. Um, make navbar links and title 16 pixels. Okay, so far so good. Place the default with open sans everywhere in the site. So far we're doing below the navbar, put three columns. A column MD3 information column, a column MD6 welcome to Castle High School column, and a column MD3 announcements column. 
So what we want to do is we want to make these three columns, okay? And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to go down here and we don't really need this section two thing. We just need this div class container. And what's cool about Eclipse, you can see I've got some yellow highlighting here indicating that there's a closed div that doesn't have a corresponding open div. And of course, we don't need this third thing at the footer thing. Okay, so we want an MD3. We'll get rid of this well color class. And we want an MD6. And we'll get rid of the well color class because we don't know what that is. And then we know how to file MD3. Okay, and the first one's going to be called information. And the second one's going to be called welcome to Castle High School. And the third one is going to be called announcements. And so if we save that out, let's take a look at the results. Okay, so that's, that's pretty good, actually. Um, what's bad about it is that these fonts are like way too big, these H1s, and the well doesn't have the right background color. So we can fix that pretty easy. Um, and the way we could do that is we can say write things. Let's say H1 is font size 16 point 16 pixels. Okay. And I noticed that it was centered. So I'll just add that right there. Okay, and then what else? Oh, the well, right? So we got this well here. Let's just add a property to say background color. Move this guy down a little bit. The background color. is going to be this guy. Oops, this guy. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering if this, take a look at this guy. Is this the right size? He looks a little big. He should be 14. He is 14. Okay, okay. Um, oh, right, and the background for the entire thing is supposed to be that gray. So we can go up here and put pound 999. Okay, and then, oh, look at that. Well, the background color, border color, should be this too. Okay, that looks better. Um, and let's go back and see what we're supposed to do next. Okay, so make the backgrounds of all wells red, their text gray, we got that. Add the 12 link labels taken from the real site to the information column. Okay, so we've got to take these 12 things and put them in to the information column. So let's go find them. So we got 12 things for the information. So here's our information column. We're going to make an itemized list with a href equals pound. Uh, whoops. Whoops. Href pound slash a slash l i we need 12 of those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 alright and they're going to be say they're going to be about us 
This is the tedious part, administration. But, you know, if you're going to make it look right, you, there's a certain amount of typing that is just, you know, part of the process. I wish I could, you know, make it better, but sometimes you just have to type. Otherwise, you don't know if things look good. Counselors, daily bulletin. Uh, directories, nightly news, library, lunch menu, I must have miscounted, and small learning communities. Looks like a cool high school. I'm going to say that. All right, so now if we go back to our thing, Looks good, except that we've got these crazy, um, you know, we've got those, those disk things. Want to get rid of those. And we also noticed that we want to uh, get the wrong color. So we could uh, We could maybe just say A. Whoops, no, can't do that. Um, Want to make it the gr the uh, yeah. So we gotta say shoots A font color. I'm trying to kind of combine things to um, make things look better. Fudge, A, oh, A, not font color, A, color, okay, so that's good, and the other, but the other thing is, we got to figure out how to get rid of that, that uh, disk thing, so I can see here, UL, list style type is disk, so if I say UL, list style type none, that gets rid of that. Okay. So, we're looking a little better, you know, kind of, let's move this down a little bit. Um, so let's see what the next thing we want us to do. So we've got the 12 link tile, make them gray and remove the bullet, we did that. So let's add the night pride image to the middle column. There's our night pride. Save as castle front. Let's refresh so we see it here. Okay, and add it to the middle column, center and making it 400 pixels high. Okay, so now we got to make a, a class, Night Pride, with a background image of URL castlefront.jpg background size is going to be uh, uh, cover background position is going to be center Let's see height is going to be 400 pixels let's put that in see what we Oops, I gotta add it to the. Uh, where's my middle thing? Okay, so let's put our div class equals night pride. Add that in. Okay, there we have our night pride. Not bad. Um, Okay, and then um, uh, let's go on to the next thing. Okay, add the period schedule to the announcements column. So if we go back to J, we've got this period schedule. So let's just copy it. this, and 
then I'm going to do an H2 because it's kind of, you know, a subheading and H2 and subheading. I hope I can finish this in less than 25 minutes. Otherwise, you guys are going to be taking forever for this one. Um, but it's not that hard, and it's kind of interesting, I think, to work with a real site. I don't know about you, but I kind of find it to be fun. Because you can kind of see, it almost gives you like a sense of how website design used to be done back in the old day. Okay. All right, so there we have our announcements all typed in. Okay, and that's pretty close, except that we don't like the way that looks. But we can fix it because we can just say H2. We want all our headers to be the same size. So we'll just add that in like that. And uh, no, I think what we wanted was to make it similar, it was going to be H2, it was going to be font size 14 picks. Right? Yeah. Um, and let's see. And what we, if we inspect this, you see it's these two font size. Oh, it's the wrong font. Okay. So... Let's see, where can we add the right font in here? Um, Yes. And I don't think these are the right fonts either. So let's let's say come to think of it, H two font family. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Much better. Okay, so now that we've done that, now what I want to do is kind of pull this thing, I inspect this element, I notice that, if I put this guy this kind of thing on, I notice that, that that's got some margin bottom that's making it kind of, so let's say margin bottom zero pixels. So that slides that up. Now that's looking super good. Okay, so there's a little bit of padding on the top of that well. Let's just get rid of that. Slide that sucker up, yeah? Maybe even five? That looks, that looks better to me. Okay, so I think we're almost done here. We added the period schedule. We set the middle section to be hidden at mobile screen sizes. So that might require a little research. You want to go to CSS grid and read about the grid. But what you find is you have to go down to this section, Responsive Utilities, which is gives some other stuff. And you find out about this hidden at the extra small size class. So it's super cool what we do is we just add to our middle column hidden XS. And when we do that, then when we reduce this to, okay, so that's kind of tablet size. <gasps> Look at that. Mobile, the middle column has gone away. I think that's just, I think that's really awesome. 
All right, so there we have our oh, this night pride. All of a sudden, it isn't fitting. Let's just check and see what happens if we go to 500. I'll edit it and make it 500 so that that fits in there. Or you know what we could do? I, another way we could do this, make it contain, and then go to 400. But then we have to set the repeat. So then we say background repeat no repeat. Okay. Now that looks a little better. And he'll do the right thing. And he's fine. Okay, so that took 29 minutes to do. that. This was a long one, but I hope you enjoyed it. Learn a lot about, um, you know, revamping sites using the inspector. Uh, and uh, and I'll have something simpler for the in-class what I guarantee it. See you next time.